Hey all, what's going on? Um, Dan here, back at the layout, and I have another video update for you. Uh, this one is very special, and um, I have a lot of projects I'm going to go ahead and show you, uh, locomotives, and uh, along with another update of my grain train. Um, I do have to apologize, I haven't been up to on, on my uh, video making, and uh, around this time in the holidays, uh, we get a little busy at the restaurant, and I've had a lot of actual client projects too that I just haven't had time to make videos. But uh, I still do want to make a couple more how-to videos, which will be helpful weathering tips and stuff like that. Um, I do have to make a quick announcement, and I'll make this very, very quick. Um, Video-wise, update videos I'm planning on posting every month. Um, that meaning I'm going to have an update video for you guys every month. I'll upload one every month. And um, if you want to, you guys can leave input on that. You can send me a message or leave a comment if you think it's a good idea. But most likely, that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, just to kind of like, well, I can't say it's a schedule. Just more like, um, just for actual timely uploads. That way you guys know when the next video is coming and you don't have to wait or, you know. But uh, I think that's the route we're going to go. But you guys can leave input on that and you can tell me what you think. Uh, I'd really appreciate that. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started on this update. Uh, I think you guys will enjoy this. Okay, so we're going to start here at my first workbench, which is my biggest one. Uh, this one right here. Um, I have two Union Pacific SD40Ns. And um, simply... What these are, are Atherin Blue Box uh, SD40-2s um, decorated for Union Pacific. Uh, I got these two units as a set on eBay for $20. Um, one is powered and one is a dummy. Uh, these are a really, really good pair of units. I really love them. Uh, I spent a lot of time working on them. Um, basically, they're represented as SD40Ns, which are SD40-2s. I'm not, I don't remember what the N standard for. Uh, not off the tip of my tongue, but uh, they're designated as SD40Ns by Union Pacific. And what they were, were they had a rebuild program selecting their very best uh, remaining SD40-2s, which they all rebuilt. They got the lightning bolt scheme. Um, as you can see, though, uh, these are the older, like, mid-90s scheme which is inaccurate, but it's a factory paint job, and it looks really nice. I just didn't want to change it, but uh, I basically did all the detail work, as you would see on an SD40N, like new fans, as for example, uh, new detail parts, stuff like that. Just real quick, I'll go over these. As you can see, of course, um, I added the typical Southern Pacific style plow. Um, some of these have this big plow, and then others have that more typical Union Pacific style plow, which you see on a lot of GEs and EMDs. Uh, but both of these have the SP style uh, plow. Um, I went ahead and added the coupler bars, um, the ditch lights, the MU hoses, and the MU, uh, MU outlet here, and then the little Pepsi can style MU uh, cable holder. I also got the walkways on it too. And uh, these are really nice because these are the first production ready to roll units. Um, they're really nice. Um, I glossed them up. I didn't go, didn't do much with weathering wise because I wanted to keep them relatively clean. All I really did with two of them was add a little bit of a fuel spill and some light, some light stuff to the plow. That's just about it. Um, on the roof you got your AC unit and your antenna and then I added a P3 on the back a little bit of exhaust but that's pretty pretty typical weathering for these uh, they're still pretty clean um, I'll go ahead and move on to this side uh, basically the same setup as last time uh, as you can see here's the MU jumper cable on this one right here and you can see what that Pepsi can antenna is for right there so that looks really cool that was a little little experiment and I'm really happy with it. Um, they don't have grab irons which I kind of wish they did but I'm not going to ruin it. Like I said I'm not going to ruin the factory paint job just because it's one of the best I've had from Atherin in a while. 
So I'm going to leave them be for now, but uh, it's pretty much the same uh, setup detail wise. Uh, this is unit number 3503. Uh, this is the dummy unit. Uh, unit number 3765 is the second, and this one is the powered unit. Um, a really good running motor too. I went in and cleaned it out, lubricated it, got the trucks clean, everything. So it runs great. Uh, they're a great pair of units and the pulling power on these is really nice. Uh, as you can see, same detail setup. Uh, you can see the trucks there, you got your speed recorder, uh, the sanding lines, and I even installed the rear rail on the truck side frames. Uh, good amount of detail, these are really nice. So that's a little something I've had had uh, had worked on a couple months ago. I got these, but uh, I don't think I ever showed them. So I just went ahead and showed them now. So, um, they look really good. So those are my UPSD 40Ns, which will be in charge of pulling my grain train. Uh, once it's fully completed, and I can get track room for it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to some other equipment here. Okay, so here's HLCX 6091, yet again. Um, of course, I've shown this about maybe three or four times now. But uh, this is the final update on this unit because it is fully completed now. Um, there are a couple things I fixed, like I redid the sills with safety stripes, and I got some better details on it. Um, I did this with the Nathrin Blue Box unit, but I'm not going to get into the detail on it uh, because I already talked about it in a previous update video. What the real update on this unit was, was how I was talking about, um, see these units uh, are CNSD40s, and they use this strange air tank design. This one's the air tank, and I'm not sure, I don't remember which one this is, but the fuel filler is actually in between these two. Um, it's an interesting placement, but the original uh, tank was a stock stock tank uh, on these blue box units, and I changed that. I modified it. I borrowed a fuel. I borrowed the air tanks. Excuse me, from a uh, scrapped GP38-2, which I had laying around, and um, I used the tanks on it. I cut them and rounded them at the ends and remade the tanks. So now it's an accurate model of an SD40-3, one of the GCFX Alstom rebuilds. And just real quick, I'll go out to the other side, uh, just to show you the ones on this side. They're basically the same. But uh, that's a big thing I wanted to get over, so that's done. HLC Deck 6091 is now ready for service and looks pretty good. Um, at the same time, I've also finished some other HLCX power, which I'll go ahead and show for you now. Okay, so here we have my brand spanking new SD40-3 HLCX 6051. Um, the previous unit I had was, I think, 2715. Um, I got rid of that unit and replaced it with this unit. Uh, basically the same setup. Um, Custom painted by me uh, in the old blue and maroon scheme, which HLCX had for lease service. Uh, these are really hard to spot now, unfortunately. It's all those blue and red units. Uh, you, you can catch a red one, that's pretty lucky. But the blue and maroon units are the rare ones. And um, this is a, a unit that's actually owned and operated by Rail America, but it's still an HLCX paint. Uh, it's just in long-term lease service. You can see I added the new grills to it, the SD40 grills. They're all weathered up. Uh, new side frames, fuel tank details, hoses, cables, all that good stuff. Um, all the decals are actually from an HLCX sheet, uh, but not for the Blue and Maroon series. Uh, on the cab roof, you can see I've added a number of airlines and stuff like that. I added a K5LA just behind the stack here in between the dynamic fans and the uh, exhaust stack. And then the airline runs all the way to the cab roof and it's uh, sandwiched by two uh, antennas. It's got a few grab irons on it, I added them here and there. Just to kind of spark up the detail level on the unit. Looks really good. Um, on this side, pretty much the same setup. You got a uh, cable on this truck. Um, on the back, uh, you can see um, I just detailed it up 
looks really nice. Uh, the number boards are actually painted over and then they just stenciled numbers directly onto the ends of the unit, which is kind of interesting. Um, on the sides, you can see the nice level of detail on the trucks. The sides looks really nice. I'm really happy with this unit. It looks really good. So that's HLC uh, 6051. It's an SD40M. Dash three. Um, really, really love this unit. It looks really good with uh, 6091. And finally, people, the moment you've all been waiting for. HLCX 6522 is completed. Um, this is a unit I I did a while back, but I never finished it. I was never able to find handrails for it, and I never really completed the detail work. Well, here it is. It's finally complete after almost three or four months. I'm really, really happy with it. I just completed it a couple days ago. Um, this was the Atheron Ready to Roll version of an SD45. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, I used the Atheron Ready to Roll model, stripped it, and repainted it. Uh, HL6522 is also um, a Rail America owned unit, uh, owned by uh, Rail America. Uh, it was leased to the GEXR for a long period of time, several years, along with HLCX 6091, which is also kind of the reason I made these two units, because they go along with the uh, 6522. Um, you can see it looks, it's pretty well the same, except that it's an SD45, the, but the paint is basically the same. And this is actually my first SD45 model, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah, you got on the front the ditch lights, plow, MU cables, cut bars, jumpers, uh, Pepsi can antennas, uh, all kinds of good details, handrails, etc. Uh, I really did good with it. It looks really nice. So I'm, I'm really, really happy with this. I'm really glad I was able to finish it. And the unit runs amazingly. It's a really nice, really nice unit. It, the pulling power alone is really nice. A little more detail on this side. Uh, I did the cab windows on units with styrene, clear styrene, and then I made the, uh, uh, the, what is it, the ends of the windows with, uh, clear, um, just straight plain, uh, sheet styrene, and I, I cut a little slit in it to make it look like the windows were cracked just a little bit, but, uh, I'm really, I really like how that turned out, that looks really nice, and on the end here, uh, pretty typical, the end of an SD45. Everyone knows what that looks like. And uh, there's the end there. Really nice bit of detail. I'm really happy with this unit. I'm so glad I got this completed. It looks really, really good. Uh, and the real unit, 6522, is actually a Denver and Rio Grande SD45. But uh, it was acquired by Union Pacific and later sold to HLCX, I believe is a story. Um... When it was on its time on the Denver and Rio Grande, it received a P3, which was nice. It's got a really nice P3 on it. There's a couple audio recordings of the unit on YouTube. Um, I've gotten a few audio uh, samples and kind of learned what the horn sounded like, got some better photos of it, and I was kind of able to use those to base my uh, detail work and my painting for the unit off of that kind of reference. So it came together, and I'm really happy with it. But uh, I now have the three HLCX unit set, and these are really nice. Uh, I guess I'll just use these basically for lease service all over my fleet, go with a couple of Union Pacific units and so forth. But, uh, yeah, that's my HLCX units. And we'll go ahead and move over to the second bench to look at what I've been working on over here. Okay, now on to the best part, the covered hoppers. Um, uh, you all remember in the previous video, uh, update video anyways, that uh, I was talking about building a 30 car drain train of um, covered hoppers. Um, a couple tweaks happened in the plan and I kind of changed my aim for nothing but uh, co-op elevator uh, grain hoppers. Uh, colorful ones too. 
um, instead of a mix of both those and um, the like roads like Chicago Northwestern Union Pacific etc um, it's all uh, private owned covered hoppers now that's what I'm focusing on collecting and uh, I've gotten quite a few here in the past couple weeks uh, quite a few um, actually on Christmas Eve I had gotten 12 more in the mail which I uh, just uh, re uh, built uh, and as a matter of fact there's still a few that need a couple touch-ups and light weathering jobs or uh, little patches or whatever um, basically what you're looking at is a series of these basically uh, grain cars from the 1970s which were numerous back then um, mainly uh, co-ops from like Iowa, uh, Illinois, Nebraska uh, let's see what else well we all, I mean you basically just about everywhere around the US um, I think even down in Michigan stuff like that but um, yeah I got a lot of them but I'll go ahead and show you just like brush over these real quick and try not to take too much time to show these to you. Uh, the first car I got is this GTA. This is an accurate finishing kit. Right behind it is another AC, uh, AF kit. Lappy Rouse Grain Cor Corp, which is in Iowa. Uh, this really nice Clem Co-op. Uh, Sands of Iowa. Farmers Co-op Company. And two West Liberty cars. The West Liberties are both Atherin kits, but uh, they differ because this one has a black roof lock, this one is green. Uh, this is from a 12 pack of cars, just like this one, that were done. This is another AF kit. This is a Walters Atherin limited edition set from a three car uh, Iowa paint car Iowa covered hopper kit set. Um, this one is an Atherin kit, Transportation of America. This one is Bev Bell. Uh, it's a really nice one, this is one of my personal favorites. Uh, Michigan Elevator Exchange. Uh, I actually have memories of seeing these cars and the Clem, Iowa cars quite often back then when our uh, co-op here in town was still uh, servicing rail cars. Now at this modern day, uh, the rail serve elevator is closed, leaving only the tractor and uh, farmers servicing elevator. So, um, um, anyways that's that one this is a Bev Bell kit I have two variations of it Albert City Elevator another rare car uh, the Walters Athern car and what these were was Athern sent covered hoppers to Walters and they painted them Percival Green is a this one is a really nice one it's a very rare too this is a accurate finishing kit um, custom painted by accurate finishing Lewis and Dreyfus is actually a very very rare car very rare. This is a really old Atherin, Atherin car. It might have been painted by Bevbell, but that goes back many years ago. So that's a really old car, and that's very rare. Uh, these two Pomeroy cars here are also a little different. One has is completely brown. The other has black, a black roof lock and black uh, trim. Uh, these Welch Green cars are Atherns. Um, this one here is painted by Accurate Finishing. The terminal grain cars, one is Bev Bell, this one is Bev Bell, and then this one is from the 12 pack of special edition Athen cars. The Boom Valley car back here is actually uh, still undergoing construction, but yeah, various elevators like that, and you know, I'll just go over these real quick. Like, like I said, all of these basically are from uh, Bev Bell, Athern, Accurate Finishing. Um, they're all Athern cars, but they were just painted by different uh, companies, Bev Bell and Accurate Finishing are two of them, and then the rest are painted by Atherin. Most of these are actually very, very rare and really hard to find. It took me a long time to track some of these down, but I'm really happy to have some of these. Um, here's a couple more right here. Conagra, Rich Grain Service, Albert City, my second Albert City, different number. Uh, my Farmer's Co-op, Rogers Green, another Pomeroy, the Andersons, that's a rare one right there. That's another very rare one, is the Central Soya with the billboard logo. This Grain Train one's quite rare, actually. 
ADM billboard is very rare. Uh, Monfort feedlots, another Albert City, my third one, another road number. Uh, this is my second Michigan Michigan elevator. And Carl tried to get a better view of it from this standpoint, so I'm not creating a shadow on these cars. Uh, this one's really nice. This is the first one I got it, and uh, that's a rare car. The Northwood Co-op and the Good Seed and Grain. This one is uh, Atherm, and this one is Accurate Finishing. So is the this one. This is Accurate Finishing. This is my second Northwood car. Uh, they're both the same and the same number, but I'm going to have to renumber this one. Uh, this is one I've been looking for for quite a while. Farm Farm our port. That's I really love the color of the car, the orange with the black trim, black ends, black underframe. It's really cool. The Farmhamville cars are really nice as well. And then there's uh, another Albert City, and then the last Farmhamville car. Early and Daniel. This is a I think a Bev Bell kit. This is a really rare one right here. Took me a while to track one of these down, but I'm glad I have it. It's really nice. Um, and then, finally, there's the last Rich Grain service car. It's a different number. One is Accurate Finishing, and the other over here, right here, is um, the Atherin version. Alright, so to finish up, these six cars right here are the rare set of uh, Nebraska Co-op cars that Atherin sent to Walters. They were custom painted by Walters. And uh, they were three, a three pack of cars. Uh, one was Sutton Co op, a Farmers Co op, and Tamara Co op. And I have two sets of these cars. They're all, all three sets are exactly identical. The only difference is that I renumbered this three, three pack set. Um, overall, that's pretty much the collection. That's quite a few cars. and. I have over 30 cars now, so since I've kind of exceeded that limit, I'm going to go ahead and just make another train like the original plan was, see how many I can collect in the shortest amount of time. But uh, those are the grain hoppers, and that's the biggest thing I've been working on, was all of these. Uh, it's kind of hard to store them all because I, I've completely ran out of room. Um, I've moved most of my drawers over here, and even these drawers here are packed to capacity, so it's hard to store these covered hoppers. So really right now, at the moment, they're sitting out on this bench over here, uh, just beside the model railroad right here. But uh, those are the grain hoppers. So that's really, really nice. I really like these cars. They're really special, and um, they're actually highly collectible, apparently. A lot of people try to collect these, especially Iowa-based co-op. Uh, cars. Those are the rare ones, and those are the ones that are highly sought after. But um, those are the covered hoppers. And last but not least, we have the two AWV RAC 4400s. This is the final time I will update these two units because they are completed at last. Um, I started with the Atherin units, uh, blue box units, and I did all, all the detail work, painting. Uh, decals, all the decals are custom, custom, excuse me. Um, the numbers on the cabs, uh, the roofs, number boards, everything like that are actually from a decal sheet, but what I did was I painted a yellow outline on the, uh, around the numbers, uh, just like the movie units have, and then all the AWVR logos, including the front, uh, front ones on the nose are all custom painted on the models. Then you got the strike plows and all that. Um, all the ditch lights, every all that detail work is on. The units look really good. I'm really happy with them. Um, this one did receive some damage over the weekend. Um, we, My uh, dad actually set something really heavy over the boxes which they were in and it actually uh, crushed these handrails. Uh, sorry about that. Crushed these off, so I'm going to have to glue those back onto the deck of the engine and then paint the uh, spots, touch them up a bit, which will really be no problem, but um, yeah, it was a little minor inconvenience. Uh, the nice thing about these units is that they actually came installed with uh, grab irons, which was really nice. It saved me a whole lot of trouble. But uh, yeah, they look really good. And uh, this is a 767, and then of course... 
777. So there's the set of units, and uh, of course you're all wondering where 1206 is, and like I said, um, 1206 is the hard one. Um, I've kind of been trying to um, finish these, but the problem was I've had uh, I had a bad formulation of paint, which uh, the, this is the first one I paint. First one I painted was right here, and the paint got messed up the first time, so I had to strip it and redo it. So I'm kind of tweaking the formula just a little bit more. The yellow is on the first uh, first 1206 unit, and I'm going to go ahead and start putting the blue on here in a little while. And uh, these two right here are also going to be 1206s, which are awaiting to be uh, stripped down and then repainted. And then this is the pair of AC 4400s I am working on currently. Uh, they'll be underway here shortly. They're already painted. They just need logos and decals and then the handrails and detail parts and then they'll be good to go. Um, but uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'll keep updating those, of course. Because I know all you will probably want to see those when they're done. So uh, I'll keep updated on that. But um, about this time... That's about it. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this update video. And I, like I said, I hope to have some more up soon. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoyed.